C2 Transfer is one of the latest releases from Synology in their cloud lineup. This is for encrypted file transfers. Now there are already a number of different file transfer softwares out there, but who knows where you are uploading your data to and whether or not it has been encrypted. In this video, we take a look at how this all works, but before we do, let's learn a little bit about the new software from Synology. With C2 Transfer, the files that are uploaded are encrypted on the C2 servers. Also, the recipients that receive it need to verify their identity before they can access them. This ensures the right person gets the access. How much does it cost? Well, for an individual or professional, it's $9.99 a month or $99.99 a year. They also have a business package, which does include a few extras in terms of file permissionings. That is $49.99 a month for five users, and for a year, it's $499.99. If you have more than five users and you wanna be able to add more, it's $69.99 per additional user. However, in this video, I'm gonna be looking at the individual one. So for the user accounts, the transfer limits are 20 gig per transfer, and you can have up to 100 concurrent transfers at once. You have the ability to add watermark to files, and we'll be having a look at that shortly in the demo. Some of the other features we'll look at are file requests, user identity authentication, and how the web portal works. One thing to note on the web portal though, it currently works on Chrome and Edge, but Safari support is coming later this year. Anyway, let's jump in and have a look. So you log into the C2 transfer page. I was already logged in, so it's brought me straight to this page. This is the first thing you would expect to see, is your encryption key. Give yourself an encryption key, make sure it's strong and complex. Once you've given yourself an encryption key, just be sure to remember this. Um, maybe use this as your one complex password that you need. You click set and it will go off and set that for you. Now we're in the C2 transfer, let's have a look at what we can do. Just before I go ahead and upload files into this file transfer tool, I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly what I have in the folder. A couple of files, I have this uh, Synology surveillance station video and the JPEG that I used as the image. So I'm gonna quickly go back across, click upload files, go to folder, and then it's gonna take me to where I am. So that was the folder that I showed you. So Synology C2 transfer, we want upload test. And then it's gonna say, this will upload all the files from the upload test folder. Are you sure you wanna do that? You click upload and there we go. You can see the files in here. So if you wanna see what's within there, there's a little I button here. We can go and you can see what is there. So go across, there's no preview for this one because it's a video and you can see my image is just there for that one. So you can see what there is. So just looking at the top here, we've got a name so we can call this inside wire test upload, upload client one, for example. Um, then we can have a look at some of the settings down here. This is where we go through, you have link expires. So if you have something time sensitive, or you can say you've got 30 minutes to download this, three hours to download this, you can set those sorts of timings, and that goes all the way up to 14 days. So for the sake of this demo, we only need three hours, well, even that's too long, <laughs> it's not gonna be that long. Um, and then we have the limit. So you can say there's one download limit, um, we can send it to whoever you want, and you can say you can only download this once, and that's it. Uh, so that's quite a good feature to have there. Um, so what it says here is once enabled, recipient will not be able to preview the file content before downloading. So they have one shot to download it and that's it. Um, if you untick that, obviously they can download it as many times as they want. Uh, you can add a watermark. So you can see on the image just here, it's got confidential across it. But actually if I wanted to, I could just put whatever I want. So if I wanted it to say inside wire, I can get it to say inside wire. That's no problem. Or if you wanted to select your own image, you can select an image from your device. So then we click save, and that's how it has here. So we have the watermark turned on, we have one download per file, and we have it expires today. Uh, if we have a quick look here, if you want to upload more, so you can actually upload multiple folders if you wish to do so. And if we have a look at the settings, again, that's another way to get to it. So then we click next. And then we're going to say, right, who are we going to grant access to? Type in an email address. Okay, and that's who it's going to. So then we create the link. It's gonna go ahead and encrypt the file. So we'll just give that a second while it does that. It is a little bit larger than I expected. It's an 800 meg file. So 
this might take a few minutes so we'll just let that run off right so that's uploaded so that took about so i'd say that took about 10 to 12 minutes to upload and encrypt so that was about eight, like i said 850 meg roughly so decent sized file um so you can see up here we have the number of tasks that we have on here we've created the recipient viewer and when it expires so like i said that's going to expire in three hours so this is the link to share you can either copy the link you can email the link or you can get the qr code and then it says down here to secure your transfer c2 will not send the file sharing notification to your recipient so you would have to send an email yourself. Uh, that's just popped up uh, an email client on a different screen. So you would need to do that yourself or you can just copy the link and paste it to them, whatever, however you wanna do it. So I have a private browsing window open already, so I'm gonna paste that. And this is what it looks like from a recipient side. So when they click on it, they're gonna say get access to a code. This is how you would verify yourself. So this is how, when you've sent a file, it doesn't necessarily mean you have access to the link. So I have to specify the email address that I gave to the sender. We type that in, we get send access code, and it's gonna send you a one-time code. So I'm gonna quickly go to my emails and have a quick look. And I should have that. And yeah, that came through straight away. So I've got my one-time code can paste that in and now it's verifying and decrypting and there we go we can now go into it we can't view it so like we said on the before you're not able to view it because it's a one-time download but if we go ahead and download it now and there we go it's as it's as simple as that to transfer a little bit more security involved here when you're transferring files from one person to another and there are some added features within there as well now that I've downloaded this I can go back to where I was before and if I do a quick refresh down here you can see I've had one viewer now I'm gonna go back now and retry and download the file just to see because we did say it was a one-time download so I've copied the link again let's go back to our private browsing window we paste it in uh, we type in the email address and we click send access code We'll wait for that to come across. There we go, that came through quite quickly again. So the one-time codes do come through very quickly. Paste that in, and you can see here, I don't actually have the option to download now. Um, so yeah, it does work, which is really good. Um, and it doesn't allow you, so the one-time download definitely does work. So just to show you that again, there's actually another option along with email as well, and that's mobile phone. So you can click, um, let's just upload a file. I'm just gonna upload the image this time, um, just for the, the quickness. We can again add the watermark, one download image, whatever you wanna call it. And then obviously it's got whatever number you wanna put on there, the date, and then whatever task, whatever it is. So click next. And you can see the drop down here actually gives you a mobile phone number. So I'm actually gonna type in my number and you can add in multiple phone numbers. So depending on who you need to give access to, there's multiple people there as well. So then we create the link and that's gonna quickly upload and go ahead and encrypt. And there we go, you can see that's set up there. So again, it doesn't actually send them an email or anything, but we can copy the file. Just click copy. Let's go to our private browsing window and um, see how this one works. So we paste and then it will ask you to type in the mobile phone number that you supplied. And uh, just to show you, there you go, you can see my I don't know how much that's going to focus in but my one-time code has come through so there we go and there you go we have access to it so we can go ahead download that that's now downloaded we won't be able to download that again and just to show you the file that came through it's just here so you can see it's got confidential written all over it uh, and just to show you the one from earlier that one has inside wire on it so what we wrote on there it's actually there one thing I do want to try is, uh, I'm not sure we didn't actually try it previously. I just want to see if it gives you the option to add both email address. And mobile phone. No. So if you, you can only enter one or the other basically. So if you try and do, so when you speak to your recipient, you can just say, okay, either email or phone number you choose, whichever one's easier. And then you can select it that way. So you can only do one or the other. And then if we have a look at this, the, the portal is very simple. It's got the list down here. Once you're done with them, you can, once you're done with them, you can click more, delete, go ahead and delete the task. 
and same again with this one we can go ahead and delete this as well so we're deleting them both so that's go, gone ahead and deleted click refresh in the bottom and now they've disappeared so that's the, the file transfer side of it in terms of the request side of it so you can actually say to someone I'm going to send you a link upload your file here which is again something really good sometimes you have the software and someone else doesn't have it you can just say upload it here and it can get sent straight to you directly so let's go to file requests we can go to create file request and this is going to be client client x uh, let's just say contract for example um, you can put when the link expires so this one actually gets you to specify a whole time that you have you can say to someone okay you need to send me this document by uh, tomorrow 7 p.m. for example um, and there we go so that's done and then you can add the watermark images to it again if you wanted to but not necessary if it's coming your way maybe they want to add it you can always do it there as well so we click next Again, you've got the option of phone number or email address because that's how it's going to authenticate you. Uh, let's just go email address. So we go ahead and type that in, click next. Again, you can send it to multiple recipients if you want. Um, we can go here, more, copy link. And then again, I'll pop across to my private browsing window. Go here, type it in. And this is what it looks like on that side. So you can say, it's a similar sort of process to what it is to send a file. I think it's the same process for the receiving the file. So we type in we type in the email address, send the access code. So let's paste the code in and here we go. There you go. You can just upload files or folders. So if I upload files, again we'll upload this image. It has a description on it. It shows up here that there's no watermark, so you can preview it, show it's there and you can delete it add whatever you need to do you can add load multiple files so you can just type whatever you want just here is your image and then we we'll click next and there we go so your file requester will be notified of the upload um, and you can upload more files if you want because the link is available till tomorrow so you can do that as many times so you can upload whatever you need to how many ever you need to let's go back to this side and you can see here if i refresh this now you can see there's one upload. Now to get access to it is quite simple. Um, you just click on it, you can click the file. If you wanna download them all, you can download them all, or you just go here and download. And that goes off and downloads for you. So it's actually popped up on a different screen, but you get the idea of how it works. So just one last thing I wanna show you, where if you were to refresh the page or go back to the main page or log back in again, it's gonna ask you for your encryption key. So be sure to remember that, write it down, otherwise you may not be able to get back in to your file transfer software. I really like the idea of the recipient verification. No longer do you have to send a separate email or text message with a password to the encrypted file. I know we've all been there and done that before. The web interface is really easy and simple to use and navigate. The fact that there are only a few options when you upload or sending a request makes life a lot more simpler. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is something you would use or just generally what your thoughts are. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you do remember to hit the like button and subscribe and maybe even leave me a comment as well. But for now this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.